here give it a second until everyone shows up Today we are talking about the Prophet's commentary on poetry. We got Yunus Awan, fresh from his uh, repentance from watching those nonsensical videos, mashallah. Tahir Omar, Yunus is a very small, smart kid, for, for thoughtful kid for high school. Like most high schoolers aren't into that. From the woods, Aziz, uh, how do we say this? Z Zader or Zatar? Uh, Sara Sulehi, Khalid Rahman, student. Tahir Omar. Okay, let's see how the Insta is doing. We got. Let's go to Insta. Insta. Just give it one second until we start up today. We talk about the what did what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about poetry, and like what is our version of poetry today, right? related to music and all that stuff okay can someone give zakat to help someone perform um umrah yes but you have to just pay them in cash zakat must be paid in cash to the person it must be paid in kind you can't buy their ticket for them you give them cash let them do whatever they want with it maybe they want to buy a ticket maybe something else like a stranger resident Hanbali reference point is here All right, so we got enough people here to now start and get going. So Heba Wan is here. Gigi is here. Guy Ibn Dude and Hamza Hussein. So the usual suspects are all here, alhamdulillah. And by the way, I mean, I'm going to later on, I'm going to give you the theory. I'm going to give you Oz's theory for why the chat has become a riot. You notice, like, suddenly... The chat room, the chat, the comment section has just become a riot. Well, Oz figured it out, in my opinion. So, um, but after we give this talk, inshallah, uh, we read on the poetry of the Prophet wasallam. Then we'll talk about, I'll give you the theory. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Babu ma jaa fi sifati kalami rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama fi shi'r. Chapter on what did the Prophet say about poetry? Okay. This hadith, this first hadith is on an Aisha radiallahu anha. An Aisha ta. Because Aisha is mamnu' min as sarf. The word Aisha is, ends with a tamarbuta as a name, therefore it can never receive the kasra, it receives the fatha instead of the kasra. That's called mamnu' min as sarf, meaning full declination cannot happen. It cannot receive tanween or kasra. That's called mamnu' min as sarf. Qila laha. It was said to her, somebody said to her, هَلْ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَتَمَثَّلُ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الشَّعْرِ Did the Prophet ﷺ give examples using poetry? Because what would the Arabs do? They would be talking about something, and they still do it, the scholars all do it. They would be talking about something, and then they'll give a line of poetry, which... People, everyone knows the meaning of that line and the context of that line. So it's a way to deliver a meaning to somebody. قالت, yes, she said, he used to give examples of poetry. Right? He used to quote poetry. And he used to use the poetry of Ibn Rawaha. Okay. So poetry uh, has its own rules, its own uh, what they consider to be good and bad poetry. And the Quran 
accuses, reply or, or uh, retorts to the accusation of Quraysh that the Quran is poetry. Okay, Quran said this is poetry, but it's this amazing poetry. It's it's a unique brand of poetry. Okay, and some techniques that are in the Quran, balagha, it's called, overlaps with the techniques of poetry. Okay, such as what? Rhymes. Or words that end in the same letter. Okay? I mean, you look at the end of Surah Maryam, for example. Everything ends with the alif. For many lines. Okay? Ends with the alif. And it just starts to, almost hypnotizes you. Okay? Or the repetition of certain verses in Mursalat, 11 times, and Rahman, 22 times, same ayah. So, the Quran replies that to them by saying this Quran we have never taught the prophet poetry and it is a testimony of all the Arabs he never gave speeches nor uttered poetry so how all of a sudden his first attempt at poetry he produces this masterpiece even just from the worldly sense of things you can't imagine it's not possible for someone to be 40 years old having never done something in his entire life then suddenly produce the greatest masterpiece of all time can you take somebody he's never sat at a computer to write a book and the first time never backspacing one letter or one word from the first time they sit at a computer they come up with the most amazing dialogue the most amazing plot twists and is leagues ahead of all the filmmakers and movie makers and script makers and novel writers. It's impossible. How about you take me? I'd never picked up a paintbrush to paint like a picture in my life. I've never painted a canvas. And you're going to give me for the first time, you take, drop me off at the store, say, buy your supplies. I can even buy the supplies. I don't even know what kind of paint to buy or what kind of canvas to buy. And on the first time, produce something greater than the Mona Lisa? Impossible. So that's what the Quran is saying here. All right? So that's why the question comes in is, did the Prophet ever cite poetry? Okay? So, there are a few instances in which the Prophet wasallam spoke of something that was sung and some people said that that's like in either an exception or it's not real poetry like okay that's an example when they were digging the trench and they had, were saying all sorts of bad things about the prophet and the Quraysh were coming and all these people so the prophet said and said i am the prophet no lie i'm the son of abdul muttalib because who is abdul muttalib he is the hero the champion and the man of God. Before the Prophet Sallallahu they used to call the Prophet's grandfather the chief of Ahlullah, which is Quraysh. Why? Because many miracles happened to him. Okay, so that's why he said, I'm the son of Abdul Muttalib. That means I'm not coming out of nowhere here. This is not some kind of innovation and lie. So, is that poetry? They differ, differ, dis, differed, and so, but when the Quran says the Prophet never does poetry, it means he never does poetry like on a regular basis or long poems, etc., etc. Okay? Now, this first hadith, this first hadith, she said that the Prophet used to, he used to bring uh, uh, speech, he used to bring poetry in his speech, okay? And that he never considered that to be wrong or bad. Okay. Sometimes an example he recited the poetry as an example he recited the poetry of Abdullah ibn Rawaha who is a Muslim poet he's a Sahabi and others sometimes and he sometimes recited the couplets of Tarfa okay sometimes that person brings news to you whom you have not compensated all right meaning that if one wants to know anything about a place you have to pay for it Right? If you want to scout, in, in the old days, how did you have a safe country? How was your country safe? Your city was safe that you always sent scouts out. It's called the reconnaissance mission. Second force recon. 
that you have to go out there and ride your horse around a couple, maybe half a day journey out. Well, that taken a long time. Take a big lap around the city. That person comes back. Okay, this tribe is traveling here. They're, you don't worry about them. This tribe is coming. Well, I did see a fight over there, but it has nothing to do with you. And he gives you the morning report. Okay? Just like Zazu. You have to pay this guy. Okay? And sometimes, the Sahaba, out of their love of the messenger and love of Medina, they would go do a whole scouting reconnaissance mission and they would not ask for payment from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what did he do? He would make dua for them. And sometimes he would say, may Allah reward you with paradise. Now if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that, we know that that's true. That dua is be accepted. None of the dua of the Prophet is are not accepted. Okay. Yet the kuffar, okay, um, continued to try to find some way to bring down the Qur'an from a heavenly work. So they would say either the Prophet was majnoon, crazy, he was, he plagiarizing. He's a poet, or he has a jinn. There's only four possible options. Okay? That he's a, play, a lying plagiarizer, that he, he's insane, that he's a poet, okay, or that he is um, has a jinn. He's deluded. Like, yes, you're so honest. You think you have an angel, but you actually have a jinn. In all these cases, there's very clear ways to go, prove against them, uh, uh, disprove them. All right. If he's a poet, where, where did the poetry come from? Like, how do you be a poet? And for 40 years, you never spoke. So we talked about that. A jinn. Do the jinn come to people who are clean? Do the jinn come to people who are living their life in society? Or do the jinn come to people who are on the fringe of society? You ever look at these um, Caribbean pirate movies? And they always go and deep in an island, in a cave, in a little hut, there's a witch, right? Or in the old movies where they want to find the sorcerer to help them with their journey, their epic mission. And they go deep in the mountains and they find an old man. He's got no family, no sons, no marriage. Skinny old man. And he's dirty, right? And he's weird. And everything about him is odd. And we finally found him. So the people are sorcerers. They don't live like normal people. Yet, what do we see of the prophet? He goes, he trades. He's in politics. He's in governance. He's solving people's problems. He's married to many women. He has many dependents that rely upon him. He's living community life. He's not living anywhere like the oracles, medicine man. All right, go to any aboriginal documentary, right? Okay, this is the documentary. I'm the chief of, right, whatever, Amazon, aboriginal people. All right, this is chief. This is hunter. All right, now we take you to medicine man. And they go far away and living up in a tree somewhere is the medicine man. He doesn't live like a normal person anymore, right? So in the old world, when jinn and humans used to interact, it was very common, and even till today, it's rare, but till today, people who are associated with jinn, they're on the edges of society. They're abnormal. They don't have family, okay? Because they have to do weird things to connect to the jinn. So we see that clearly the prophet doesn't live like that. All right, he's Majnoon. If he's Majnoon, how did he defeat Abu Sufyan? That's the easiest one to destroy. If he's Majnoon, explain to me how does he run a city? How do they have all these intelligent people believe in him if he's Majnoon? So that's... So what does that leave? That leaves... That he plagiarized. Okay? He plagiarized or he's deluded. So if he's a lying plagiarizer, then how did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam get the reputation before Islam of the trustworthy and the honest. How do you go from that to committing the biggest fraud okay, that Arabia had ever seen had, and the world had ever seen because he clearly conquered the world because of this so-called fraud of yours, which you guys call a fraud. So how do, how, again, how do you go from being a sadiqul amin all this time 
And then all of a sudden, you become the biggest liar. And they used to say, he doesn't lie about the money we leave with him. You think he's going to lie about the heavens? Right? Make a lie about Allah? If he lies, does not a liar eventually have an inconsistency? Liars forget, right? Why is the truth best? Because you don't have to remember the truth. You have to remember your lies. So if I lie to Ryan, let's say I don't want to hang out today, right? Uh, I don't want to hang out tonight because really all I want to do is I actually want to go out with another friend of mine, right? Doesn't this happen to people? I'm telling you this happens all the time. I actually want to hang out with, you know, uh, person X. Person Y comes and invites me, all right? I say to person Y, you know what? I'm a bit tired. I don't really want to go. But then I go person X. Now I have to remember... I got to remember, and I got to make sure Ryan doesn't see me. I got to make sure that person Y, we don't cross paths. And what I could have the most amazing thing. I got to make sure not to post about it, not to talk about it, because I have, I have to remember my lie. That's a very simple thing. People do this all the time, right? I just say, no, that is the dumbest thing in the world. You're going to get caught, right? Oh, I don't, I don't really want to go out with this person because, you know, he, he bugs me. So I'm just going to make up an excuse. I'm just going to say, well, I'm sick. Then I get caught, you know, doing something else. It takes a lot of energy. You have to remember your lies. So show me the inconsistencies in the message of the Prophet. If it's a lie, there should be a lot of inconsistencies. And there was never a lie. There's never an inconsistency in the deen. There's nasikh wa mansukh. There are exceptions but there are no inconsistencies in the religion. There's no inconsistency in the Qur'an. Because if he's a liar, then the Qur'an is his words, right? Show me the inconsistency in the Qur'an. So there are no inconsistencies indicating this is not a lie. Secondly, if he's a liar, would not, did not, didn't he live every single day preaching to his people? Wouldn't they have discovered that he's a liar? Is he surrounded by fools? If he's surrounded by fools, how did they conquer Persia and Byzantium? Oh, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas and Talha and Zubair and Khalid ibn Walid and Amr ibn al-As. Are they fools to be tricked by a liar? If they're fools, how did they conquer Persia and Byzantium? At world history, this is a world event. Even the Kafir, he has to admit, yes, the Arabs conquered Persia and then they, they conquered Byzantium. Right? The kafir has to admit to it. It happened on display, worldwide, okay, level. Everyone knows about it. If that's the case, are they deluded by some liar? Okay. They get dope, fooled and duped. So that's the issue of him being a liar. Secondly, we know it's documented as well. The Prophet ﷺ does not read or write. How, was he gonna, where is he going to go sneak to take lessons? Right? Where did he, who, who gave him these lessons? Do you know that the, why, one of the wisdoms of Mecca, let's say, the Prophet ﷺ sent in Mecca. Why is this? That because one of the features is that Mecca is such a small town surrounded by mountains and then desert. You can't escape. You can't travel. You cannot do anything in this small town except everybody will know. You can't sneak. Nobody is in this town except we all know him. Unlike somebody in New York City. All right, you got me somebody in New York City. Then yes, you can sneak around and nobody will know. But in Mecca, if there's somebody that knew the Bible... You're, how are you going to be the only one who knows him? Even just 10 years ago, even today, there are some cities in America, some cities probably in England, in Canada. The town is so small. There's 5,000 people in the town. You can't go out to breakfast with your family except the whole town is going to know. By the end of the day, the whole town knows. You can't break your leg. The whole town is going to know by the end of the day. If a new person comes in town, within one week, we know everything about him. That's how small towns work. 
and the Prophet was put in a small town, his entire life was basically transparent, everyone's life is transparent, everyone knows everyone's business. So there, can't, there will not be a hidden scholar somewhere teaching him the Bible. And he's not going to sneak off. Where are you going to sneak? If you sneak, the Bedouins would have seen it's surrounded by mountains. Where are you going? Okay. Wherever he goes, it's going to be a long journey of days. And he'd be missing. And we'd know he's missing. So you see that the way that Allah Ta'ala revealed this book and manifested the religion negates all these things with very simple demonstrations in real life, not theories. So, is he a liar? Well, he's not a liar. He would have fooled all those other people who were smart enough to conquer nations. Is he deluded? He thinks he's a prophet, but he's not. Okay? Deluded people don't succeed in the world because if you're deluded, it means you don't know how to assess facts properly. That's what delusion is. A delusion is the misconstruing of facts and fiction. Okay? So if I'm seeing, if you're deluded, you cannot be deluded in one thing and then perfectly accurate in everything else. So your observation of reality is warped in every sphere. If you meet a deluded person, he's deluded in everything. Okay? You're not deluded only on one thing. So this angel is actually a demon. If you mess that up, you're going to mess up everything else. But what do we find? The Prophet's family life, perfectly intact. His financial life and the finances that he established in Medina, perfectly intact. His interaction as a leader, his city, perfectly intact. Okay? Meaning his followers, they follow him. So if he was deluded, that means he does not know how to assess and separate fact from fiction. That's the nature of delusion. Okay? That you're seeing something that's not there. Or you're reading into something that's not there. If you have that, if you're doing that, you do that everywhere. Like someone who's late. If someone's late, he's late all the time. Right? You can't possibly be late to work, but for everything else you're on time. No. Lateness is a habit. Right? If you're late to work, you're late to everything else. If you're somebody who lies, you lie all the time. If you're somebody who misconstrues facial expressions and statements, etc., etc., you do that in your family life, in your home, in your work life, in your social life. You do it everywhere. It's a habit. So delusion is really deep to say that, no, 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 it was a jinn that the prophet thought was an angel. That means he doesn't know how to separate angel from jinn. If he doesn't know how to do that, then why should we think that he knows how to do anything else? Then he would delude en fe foe from enemy, enemy from friend, right? He would not know. That. Is Abu Bakr a real friend? Is Omar a real friend? Is Abu Sufyan a real enemy? He would mess that up too. And we don't see that he messed that up. He got that just right. Perfect. So this is how it's very important for you as Muslims to know the four ways, four or five ways, that the Qur'an mentions how the Prophet ﷺ, how he's attacked. And by negating all that, it necessitates only one possibility that becomes obligatory for us, is that he's truthful. And that becomes the hujja or the proof of our belief in the Prophet ﷺ. That's the proof. Okay? Because not only do we have to prove the existence of God, we have to prove the truthfulness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Next, An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam inna astaqa kalimatin qala hashshair kalimatu labid. The most truthful of statements that a poet. Right, honey, you come sit here. Ayub, sit there. Did you do the watch it? How lo laqutil billahi. You come in here. You destroy the studio. Uh, did you put the wukhur? Astaqu kalimatin qalaha Ashairu kalimatu labid The most truthful word a poet has ever said is the word of labid Ala kullu shay'in ma khala Allah batilu 
وكاد أمي أمية ابن أبي الصلت أن يسلم. Okay. So this is a line of poetry that the Prophet loved. The most truthful couplet of poetry is that of Labid ibn Rabi'ah. He said, Verily be aware, everything besides Allah is futile. It will disappear. It's futile. It will, one day it will be not satisfactory. Okay. And Umayyah ibn Abi Salt was about to accept Islam because of this. Labid, he became Muslim. Okay. He left composing poetry after Islam. He used to say that Allah Ta'ala has given him something better than poetry that he should focus on, which is the Qur'an. And he is a great Sahabi. And he attained to the age of 140 or more. Because, you know, back in those days, people don't know exactly how old they are. It's an estimate. Like, I was born the year after you were born, and you were born the year after the Great Flood. That's how they used to do things, right? Prophet was born the year of the elephant. Now, you see why that's important? He was born on the time of an, a major event so that we know exactly how old he was. Okay. The other part of the couplet is every gift or blessing must at some time come to an end. Umayyah ibn Abi Salt, he was a famous poet who expressed the truth of his poetry. And he believed in the Qiyamah and the mercy of Allah. But the mercy of Allah, he says... Uh, was not with him and he did not accept Islam. So he had some beliefs that were true and uh, correct, but he did not accept Islam. And regarding his poetry, the Prophet ﷺ said, his poetry was Muslim, but his heart was not. In other words, his poetry is true. It talks about Qiyamah, it talks about all these good things, but he himself was not. And so we look, at, and we're going to look at some of these in a second. It sort of reminds us of novels that you might read, Umayyah ibn Abi Salt, of course, he was, non, he was a pagan, but he had some good things to say. Likewise, there may be novels assigned in school, other things, where there's a lot of great lessons here, but the author is not a Muslim. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying that's possible. It's possible to have a book, a novel, something, where all the lessons are wonderful, but the author is not a Muslim. And we can just read that. There's nothing wrong in reading that. There's nothing wrong in looking at these things. Especially the more you learn your deen, you're able to separate. And we always have to, the way we live here, as all, every Muslim in a society mixed, practicing Muslim, not practicing Muslim, non-Muslim completely, complete pagan, etc., etc. Okay? We all have to learn two things. That you're going to see stuff, you have to have a filter. And you're going to interact with people. You have to have a filter. Okay? You cannot be just influenced by everything that you see. You have to be able to interact with life, with Muslims and non, and learn how to filter things out. That, all right, I'm going to hang out with this guy. This habit that he has, I'm going to avoid. That habit, I'm going to avoid. Right? Other things about him are really good. So we have to be able to filter that out. Every one of our youth, let's say, our kids that go to school, whatever, they have to do the same thing. Kids who go to college. You can have one of the best mentors in a field, but you got to know that his personal life has nothing to do with me, right? You can read about business leaders, about other people, and read all their techniques and truly admire them, okay? But you have to be able to say that other parts of their personal life might be trash. I'll tell you who was a person who was like completely like one side of him is amazing, the other side is absolute garbage. Steve Jobs. Right? If you read about how he runs a company, how he brands, how he uh, uh, puts things together, to me, it's the best. He's the best. He's the best. Nobody matches him. Nobody. Not Nike, Phil Knight, not Bill Gates, who, you name it. Steve Jobs was, was the best. Okay? The way that he put his products together, the way that he made them simple, the way that he minimized everything and made it so easy for the user to use, the way that he innovated and came up with new ideas, out-of-the-box ideas, he didn't just replicate, the way that he actually cared for the vision and the product more than the money, right? Yet he was smart enough, he was savvy enough 
to make a ton of money. Otherwise, you don't have a business, right? Now, you shift to his personal life and the way he actually chose to live. It's just insane. And it's something to, to put aside. You have to be able to filter. All of our youth have to learn to do this because they're going to interact with so many different types of people. They got to know, well, wh what do I imitate and when do I not? All right? What do I follow and what do I not? And that's very important. Okay. Parents too, totally true. Sometimes, sometimes your own parent may have a habit that you know that that habit is a no and other things are yes, right? How many people's dad smokes? Arab and Desi dads, Turkish dads, chimneys, chimneys, right? Turkish dads, subhanAllah, all right? You got to just separate, but it's your dad. You got to separate, okay? So... That's where an, a great example of how the Prophet ﷺ showed us that this man, Umay ibn Abi Salat, his poetry is wonderful, but he himself wasn't a Muslim. All right. Now, there was a Sahabi, Uthman ibn Mad'un. Okay. Oh, Maham, you missed a lot. Okay. You missed a lot. Maham, wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. Well, one thing you have to go to, by the way, is you got to rewind and watch the refutations of the four or five accusations leveled against the Prophet for all time. All these accusations are the same. Whether you bring me an Orientalist today or the Quraysh of the past, the accusations against the Prophet are the same and we showed the refutations of them. Very simple. Now, Uthman ibn Abi Mad'un, uh, sorry, Uthman ibn Mad'un, he was a very noble type of man and the Prophet ﷺ kept urging him to enter Islam. And he was embarrassed. He kept saying, um, I'll think about it. Blah, 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 blah. Then finally, the Prophet kept pushing him and kept pushing him. And he was so embarrassed that he said, okay, fine. I'll enter Islam. According to his own words, he says, I entered Islam without really believing in it. Just out of embarrassment from the Prophet. Until I heard the Prophet recite the Quran, okay, reciting a such a, a verse that entered my heart okay and that verse was um inna allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yana 'anil fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghi that verse inna allah ya'muru bil adli allah he commands you to justice and excellence in everything that you do and being good to your relatives and he forbids you from filthy things and unknown things that may munkar, bad things and oppressing other people and the man says in himself the sahabi he says this is not the word of anyone but Allah everything is in this statement these six things all good things are in these three things and all bad things are can be categorized as these other things so he said, at that moment, Islam entered my heart. Now when Islam entered his heart, he went full in, fasting, praying at night. So much so that his wife complained to the Prophet ﷺ. She said, He fasts all day and he prays to Hajjur all night. So where does that leave me? So I wake up, let's have breakfast. No, I'm fasting. Okay, uh... Nighttime comes around, end of the day. All right, let's 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 go to bed. No, I'm praying Qiyam al -Layl. Well, where's wife in all this? So the Prophet went and he told him to balance it. He then said, Uthman ibn Mad'un, he became so focused on his ibadah that he was once, there was a, essentially a big gathering of Quraysh in Mecca. And the Prophet, uh, uh, and, and the poet, a poet was there. Labid himself. And Labid was recite. It was like a concert. Imagine a concert. Labid is reciting poetry. And he said, Ala wa kullu shay'in, see what, what is the line? Ala kullu shay'in ma khala Allah batilu. Everything but Allah is batil. means it will have an end. And it will one day not satisfy you. And not fulfill its job. 
And what did what did uh, Uthman ibn Mad'un say? He said, "Kadabta, you're wrong." Naim ul Jannah baqi. The the pleasures of paradise will last forever. Security guards at the party took him, dragged him out, and gave him a black eye. A bad black eye. Okay? When they took him out, right? And the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet said, you didn't have to say that. Right? Like, you're not obligated to say this. Uthman said, oh, Messenger of Allah, I'm not complaining. I have one black eye. My other eye is the only one complaining. It also wants a black eye. Like, I was hit for the sake of Allah. I want another one. Okay? So he enjoyed even being hit for the sake of Allah by saying the truth. So that's an example of that line and the story behind that line. Okay. Next one. Haddathana... This hadith is Kuntu Haddathana Marwan ibn Mu'awiyah An Abdullah ibn Abdul Rahman al-Ta'ifi An Amr ibn al-Sharid An Abihi qala Kuntu ridfa al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama Fa anshattuhu Mi'ata qafiyatin Min qawli umayya ibn Abi Salt al-Taqafi I was riding behind the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I was reciting. When they're riding, what are they doing while they're riding? What do you do when you're in a plane? You watch a movie, right? Try to keep it halal as much as you can. But when you're riding, you got to pass the time. So what did they do? They recited poetry. So he said, "I recited about a hundred lines of poetry to the Prophet." Okay, and every once in a while, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "He." Keep going. This is good. Right? Until I reach a hundred lines. And he would keep saying, he, yeah, and he, uh, uh, keep going. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, in kadala yuslim. He is so close to Islam. Okay. Umayya ibn Abi Salt. This poetry, this poet who is so close to entering Islam. Okay. Let's see what the comment says here. Hmm. What happened? He didn't become Muslim. Umay ibn Abi Salt did not. But Labid did become Muslim. Yeah. What did they put the... Uh... Why don't they line up the hadith, the, the, the hadith properly here? See what the comment, uh, how they translate this one. I once accompanied the Messenger of Allah and I sat behind him on the camel. I recited a hundred couplets of Umayya ibn Abi Salt. Umayya ibn Salt. And the Messenger kept saying, Go, say it again. He, continue. And then he said, Umayya almost accepted Islam. So again, here we have the Messenger of Allah listening to the poetry, meaning the entertainment of a non believer. As long as it's halal. Okay. So, entertainment, passage of time, uh, from a non believer. He took it from a non believer. Okay. So, we find that to be something that we can relate to because that's basically the way we live too. Anytime that you want, like a documentary or something that's worth passing the time with, if you're traveling or something like that then most likely it's going to not be a Muslim. So you shouldn't necessarily feel bad about it as long as what is said is sound and not forbidden. That's the condition. The Sharia is the condition. All right, next one says, حدثنا عبد الرحمن ابن أبي الزناد عن هشام ابن عروة عن أبي عن عائشة رضي الله عنه قالت كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يضع لحسان ابن ثابت Mimbaran fil masjid. He put for Hassan bin Thabit, the Meccan poet, the greatest poet of Quraysh. He said he was to put a step for him, like a mimbar, in the mosque. And he would stand 
and he would praise the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Okay? And when delegates would come, he would recite poetry about Islam, about the truth. Okay? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah ta'ala yu'ayyidu hassana bi ruhil qudsi ma yunafih. Okay? Because of what Hassan is doing, Allah is helping him with the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? It's Jibreel alayhi salam. Ar-Ruh al-Quds is, is Jibreel. Aw yufakhiru an Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Okay? So this hadith shows that the arts, when they're done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's like weaponry. Right? Like we don't have this anymore. But it's like weaponry. It's a weapon because you it's a soft in it's soft persuasion there's hard power and soft power hard power is the military soft power is what it's persuasion and they're being persuaded they're starting to love islam okay and he defends and praises the messenger of allah so we we believe that a person if they're using their the arts for a good cause you're being helped by Allah. It's soft power. Okay? So the commentary says, Jihad is observed at all times in different ways. Striving for the truth is observed at all times, but in different ways and circumstances. One of the Habayb of Yemen, he says, the battle today is al-bayan. That's so true. It's clarifying. There are so many voices this one's saying this is Islam. That's saying that's Islam. Another one's calling you to Marxism. Another one's calling you to veganism. Another one's calling you to some other nonsense. And then some people are calling to Islam. Some people are purposely ruining the name of Islam. So the fight today is to clarify. Who can clarify, make the matter as clear as possible what the truth is and get the word out to people? Who can do that? That's the battle today. The battle today is not with swords or guns. Or even a military, right? Who's going to fight the U.S. Army? It's with your words and your ability to get the message across to people. Okay, and here, a type of a type of jihad was with the tongue. Okay, did not the Prophet ﷺ refer to the tongue by saying the greatest jihad may be the word of truth to an oppressive ruler? Once a delegate came from the tribe of the Bani Tamim, a humongous tribe. Okay? And he came with their poet Akra. And they would each have someone give poetry. Okay? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I was not sent to compose poetry. Okay? But he let them take place. The first their speaker stood up, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pointed to Thabit ibn Qais anhu to reply and he did okay then he asked then the other guy replied with poetry then the prophet pointed to Hassan bin Thabit stand up and reply okay and they would the people would judge who did the best in our terms today not to make a silly analogy but that's what they call a rap battle right you guys said say it a a line of poetry, our guy matched it with a better one. Then your guy stood up and said some poetry, and our guy matched it and said a better one, right? And there's like a general consensus or a general feeling of who did better, okay? Their poet was the first to accept Islam, the proof that they did better. Their poet of that tribe became Muslim, okay? He became Muslim. Reciting poetry was common in those days, and it was widely written. People used to write down the poetry, and it had a great effect on people. It was media of the time. It was the entertainment, the medium that was it relaxing to people, easy for people. Today, it's like a YouTube video or a little Instagram video. Today, some people, they want to go back to the days of the Prophet and write a poem. I don't want to read a poem. I've never read a poem in my life. I won't read a poem, right? Right. Have you ever read a poem? Well, those are fine, right? Qasidas, dhikr qasidas. Like Edgar Allan Poe or something? 
Yeah, like, I'm no. not going to do that. No, no. I'm never going to sit and read a poem. I would also, only because we sing them and they're about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I would not pick up a, a book of poetry and read it. Times have changed. But people will scroll all day looking, oh, this was a really clever Instagram pic, right? This was a really clever, like, little video. And people love it and they share it, right? And the most rudimentary sort of sarcastic one is the meme. Like for sarcasm, right? And humor. So all these means and mediums are used by people at all times. Yet we have in the Messenger of Allah the, the, the purpose of their use that will last you an eternity. You make a nice clever meme about gas prices. You make a Muslim laugh for two seconds. You get maybe a little hasana for that. But you write something, a picture, an Instagram clip, that people could actually draw near to Allah from that? And there are shiuch out of Kuwait and these places who have teams behind them clipping their speeches about dua, about Allah. That clip, as long as it's being watched, people's lives are being changed for infinity. They're drawing near to Allah because of these clips. Right? Now you have the sheikh and then you have some techie, geeky kid artsy type of person, right? Who knows how to y use software. And what's the latest ways of doing this? That's no different than someone being good at poetry, right? Today, if a company is going to hire someone to make Instagram pics, videos, or to write poems, who's getting paid, right? <laughs> who's getting hired? So you have to take the example of what the Prophet said was saying from poetry at that time and apply it to what benefits to, to, to what is real now and effective okay so when you're part of an islamic organization and you're like the instagram team or the twitter team do not underestimate yourself okay you're like one of the most important parts of the team okay it's been mentioned in so many hadiths even Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, she was aware of all the poetry. And she said, the Prophet said, she said, he said that satire is more effective on Quraysh than showering arrows on them. And it was one time that the Sahaba were sitting around singing a song or reciting a poem in a happy way. And someone said, came back and said, we're at war here. We're about to have war. Prophet ﷺ said, for them to see us happy is harder on them than arrows. And that's why the United States defeated the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union, they don't know how to have a good time, right? Where the Americans, it's a big party. Like, Americana is just one big party. So what do the people like? They like the party. They're not going to sit there reading your economic systems. And on top of the Marxist system is no fun. What do you mean? I can't have anything anymore? I can't own stuff. The state's got to own my house. What? The state's got to own all the wealth? Who said? Right? Who came down and, and, and made you king to say this, right? And made you God to say something like that. So it's no fun. And that's why the Americans won. The Americans didn't want, win because of anything except it's a funner system. right? And it's closer to Fitzgerald too. Like, I got to own my own stuff, right? At the very basic level, that's why it defeated them. And what did you have in the USSR? A bunch of miserable people. Okay? Wherever communists go, there's misery, oppression, and they don't do the job. Okay? There's more poverty than anything else. There's more oppression than anything else. i never seen Joseph, Joseph Stalin. Uh, where did he get a stomach that big? Right? He's eating very well, and all the, every other communist is in a bread line, hungry. Right? Yet this guy's got a stomach this big. Gorbachev, very healthy looking guy. The, the elites are not eating like the people, right? In any event, forget this. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said, Al Mu'min, he makes jihad with his sword and with his tongue. In another hadith, I swear by Allah, the poet, this poetry hits them like an arrow. Okay? And that's where we do have some issues today because a lot of these, okay, um, means of entertainment, they're almost impossible to do in a halal way. 
Can you possibly actually put together a blockbuster movie without nakedness and music? It's not possible, right? So some of the mediums that we're in today, they just won't work for us. And I don't even think you should try, all right? And then if you have something like air to roll, all right, they cut some corners, but the ummah generally accepted it was fine because in comparison to what else is out there, it was way better. It's a story that they're trying to promote the origins of the Ottoman Empire, okay, and all that stuff, right? So that's a whole big debate on the issue of how Muslims could utilize. And my philosophy on this is you're going to be a movie maker, just make a good movie with your own intent to um, whatever your intention is to draw people near. But I don't believe in like an Islamic movie because if it's going to be a f explicitly Islamic movie, then fo explicitly follow Islamic rules, right? I watched one movie. Yeah. Salah B movie. Yeah. Like from 1970 or something. Yeah. It was good. They just had music, but it was like this movie. It was, was a good movie. Big. Yeah. It wasn't in English though. It's only in Arabic. And so you had subtitles. Subtitles, and it was just like completely like boring. Like it was a bore, right? But it was a good movie because yeah. it was about Salah Hadin, but. I mean, you support it out of sympathy, right? Yeah. Like, I got to support it because it's about Salah al -Din. But really, gut check, you're going to change the channel, right? <laughs> so the, the truth is, if you're going to be something, like, if you're going to be a movie maker, look, it's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make a good movie to the best of your capability. But I don't believe in, like, an Islamic movie, right? Because you won't be Islamic. And if you are Islamic, no one's going to watch it. Right? A whole movie with no soundtrack? Right? Uh, and no women, too. Like, why would you... We don't put women on a screen and look at... In Islam, like, that's not a pious thing to do. There's no such thing. So I would just either not do it at all. And if someone's going to do it, I would say to him, Listen, you're in this field. It's between you and Allah. Make a, you make a good movie, you make a good movie. Right, but don't try to weld the two worlds together because they're never going to come together. Okay. In any event, all righty, folks, let us go to our sponsors today. Our sponsors are Mecca Books, as you all know. Mecca Books, very, very, very important. Okay, sponsorship. All right, because they have a lot of great books, and you can. Get such books as, um, what is it called, Ryan? The Exemplars, which we were supposed to be part of in a set of interviews with them, but they got busy. That's a really good book. But get MeccaBooks.com, use coupon code SAFINA, and you'll get a discount. Okay. Our other sponsor, our other sponsor is patreon.com backslash Safina Society. All right? Patreon.com backslash Safina Society. That is a way in which you can be part of this program by um, becoming a patron, right? And then supporting us. And I thank all of our patrons. We have a number of patrons, okay? And I thank them all personally, myself, all right? And we will start taking questions here. So, uh, you can become a patron at patreon.com backslash Safina Society. All right, let's start taking Q&A. Uh, you get that iPad from the charger. All right, and go into the... Give me give me the... I'll get, I'll get you onto YouTube. All right. Give me that bad boy. All right, Ryan, kick us off with a question. Does the ayah wala sofa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda in surah duha refer to contentment and satisfaction with receiving in this dunya or in the akhirah? Wala sofa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda is that the question? Yeah. It's in dunya and in akhirah. Dunya and akhirah. Both. 
the future of a pious Muslim is always better than his past. The more a person's iman is going up, their future is better. What else you got? Advice on how to stop being lazy. How to stop being lazy is... Energy is not by physical. It's partly by physical, but it's partly by motivation. Do you have a motive? Do you have a reason to get up? You have to make yourself happy. You have to learn how to think the positive thing to the point that you, you're happy about waking up. right? So you always got to think, like, what do I have to gain today? All creation wants to gain and wants to avoid harm. So you have to wait, always ask yourself, okay, um, what do I have to gain out of this? And wake up and move. Next. Yesterday you said in the Maliki school we don't do qiyas for rukhsas. Correct. Is it, isn't the evidence of kafara for breaking a fast based on qiyas of inter, intercourse kafara? Repeat. So he's basically asking if kafara by giving the charity yeah. or by fasting for 60 days or, or kafara for breaking the fast is based off of qiyas of the intercourse hadith where the sahabi came and said I had uh, said that he had intercourse and broke his fast and asked the Prophet Sallallahu about the kafara no no it's not based on that qiyas it's based on the language of the verse not necessitating that in order to be in order alright Habiba Hussain says what's the meaning about children being wealth and innama amwalukum wa awladukum fitna it means they have the potential to distract you from your course to distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and some people follow their children down the rabbit hole and that happens even way back in the day because uh, Surah Al-Kahf Sayyidina Al-Khidr said that there was a two righteous husband and wife and they had a child who was going to go astray and they would have went astray with him. Sometimes pa the parents follow their kids and go astray as the kid goes astray. So that's how they're a fitna. Tahir Omar says, please do not skip my question. Let's go to Tahir Omar's question. Can you elaborate on what is going on in Tunisia? I guess that's what we're going to have to be uh, doing tomorrow. I'm going to you take the Instagram questions. Get the mic close to your mouth. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll have to look into Tunisia tomorrow because I don't know what's going on. Now, Oz, is, um, Oz has a theory. You saw what he just said. What did he just say? Let's see. He literally just said it was a different Oh. <laughs> No, my Rihanna has my phone. Here, give me the phone, Rihanna. Um, let's see. Uh, let's... My question is being skipped. This is not fair. Yes, that is the proof of Oz's theory. So what is Oz's theory? Someone said, that, do you mind if we make respectful memes of you? Respectful memes? <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. I mean, I'd be interested to see what they have to, what they come up with. Yeah, I'm interested to see what you come up with. Um, it's not frozen you can uh, is it frozen uh, Oz's theory is that the reason the chat has gone crazy is because there's a lot of kids that are out of school so I'm going to ask you if you're a kid in school put your grade tell us what grade you're in so we can see if Oz's theory is right <laughs> right I think Oz's theory is right okay so uh, if you're a kid in school, tell us what, you, what, what grade you're in so we could see. And you know what he said? He said, we'll do a, well, a thing where he plays video games on Twitch and I'll just give the class on Twitch. I said, I have no clue what you're talking about on Twitch and video games, but I'll do it. All right? If it's just me giving the class, you, can, you guys can play games all you want. Okay. Are the actions of Allah contingent? No, they're not contingent. The actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they manifest when He wills. 
Okay? It manifests when he wills. Umur yubdiha wa la yabtadiha. Matters that he manifests, but they manifest, they not begin at a set time. Ibrahim Khan, why is it permissible to speak to non-Muslim women and frown to speak on Muslim women? Respectfully, of course. The ruling on speaking to women is all the same, which is na namely that you only speak to them for a need, Muslim or not. Ibn Rushd says in the Bidayat al-Mujtahid that the, is there a book of comparison about the different Qur'at? Allah Alam, I don't know about that. All right. I do not know yet. I mean, if there is a book on uh, the comparison of the different Qur'at, but if you go into Baghawi, he talks a lot about the Qur'at, right? Tafsir al Baghawi, there's a lot of mention that um, of the different statements of, or the different uh, qira'at and what they mean the implications I'm not here 9-11 will be, do being a, be doing a series on the Nabawi's 40 hadith that might be in one of the additional streams that we're going to do we're probably going to do a stream in the future with one of our other teachers okay are there any questions from Insta I'm sure you speak in the mic Recognize the book thing. I think it's some Salafi book. Criminals of Islam? Who's the publisher? That's what I need. Um. Okay. Um, Lily Rose, is that the same as Lily Poppy from yesterday? Was Asif but was poetry spoken or sung? No, poetry said in a rhythm, but poetry is said more in a rhythm when they're riding an animal. Because it helps the animal move. Okay? When they ride the camel, they say it in a rhythm, and it helps the camel get into a, a, a mode. Yes, because... It's finding it. Let me find it. All right. This book looks kind of silly. What's that? I could be wrong, but we'll get the details. Who's the author of that book? Dr. Shabir Ahmed. MD. MD? Medical doctor. What's, what's, why is there a book called Criminals of Islam? How does that make sense? The yeah, author. Concealment of the truth and scholarship is a crime, according to the Quran. Hmm. All right. Interesting. What is it, Abe? Read it to me. Give me a YouTube question. Abe, read it. Speak into the mic. Al-Qarawiyin, yes. Wasa'id al-Gamani, wa Hamad al-Hassan al-Dinhu, the Madikis are esteemed in their knowledge of memory. Those are great scholars, and they're, they've mixed between Saudi Salafi scholarship and Madiki scholarship. That's the difference between them and other Madiki scholars. Okay. That's the difference. Regarding Twitch, I don't, I have not played a video game for like 30 years. So don't ask me to play a video game. I don't know how to play video games. And I don't play video games. And I'm against video games. I despise video games, right? So, but if Oz is like, okay, well, the kids are playing video games. Give us the class. I'll give the class, but I'm not playing no video games. And I'm not, wa let alone watching people play video games. I do not understand where this world is going. People watch other people play video games. All right, that's a thing, I guess, in our in our world. Okay. Khadija Asif says, sixth year in university for me, but I think the reason chat is louder. Oh, she's a sixth year university. There's a lot more participants, and now we all know each other. Yeah, it's true. The poll said that there was only like three percent. Only three percent kids. Ayub, on the mic, there should be text says something to say something like 770 
You see that? Turn the mic so that's where you speak into. Do you see it? You got to speak in the side that says 770. And you could squeeze this thing and turn this. As you squeeze this two handles right here. You watching? Squeeze these two and turn the mic. Yes. But hold it because it's going to fall. If you squeeze it, the mic will fall. And turn it towards you. Okay. Speak into the mic. Is his mic loud enough? Okay. Give us a test. Give us a test that you... Yes, I did watch humans play sports, but I don't watch someone press buttons. It's not a thing from my generation. Ayub, say something? Testing? Test. Good. Hannah, what's your question? Oh, um, tips to strength, discipline, and willpower. Discipline, willpower is all rooted in desire. It's rooted in desire. Willpower is to give yourself an order and stick to it. That's how simple it is. That's willpower. Um, Discipline and willpower is all about desire. You have to learn how to create desire within yourself for something. Now listen to this. Hold on before you go to the next. Sophia has a new technique. She puts a red exclamation point. Okay. Okay. So that way we can get attention. This is a smart way of getting attention, by the way, because in this, a uh, lot of other comments here. Sophia says, if you wake up late for Fedge, do you recite it out loud or silently? Not only do you recite it out loud, you make up your wits if you didn't. You pray the Turaq as-Sunnah, which is Raghiba. In the Madiki Madhab, there are three categories of the Sunnah prayers. Witr is Sunnah Mu'akkadah. You should never miss it. Raghiba is the next level. And that's the two rakahs before Salat al fajr And then the rest are nafila, Regarding the, sal- the salawats around the obligatory prayers. So if you wake up late and you missed fajr, you wake up, make sh- you pray your witr, you pray the two rakahs, Raghiba, and then you recite fajr out loud. You pray Fajr out loud as you would have prayed it exactly. Yusuf says, is there a concept in Islam of sacrificing animals will get one's sins forgiven? As a charity, yes. As a charity. As an act of charity, yes. If you had given gold, it's the same thing. If you had given dollars, if you had purchased meat, if you had purchased cooked food, it's the same. Speak. Um, I have a. Uh, how do you deal with anxiety as a Muslim? Any advice? How do you deal with anxiety as a Muslim? Anxiety, the way I look at it, is always caused by two things. When we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we mess up our lives. We have desires that will mess up our lives, it will mess up our economics. We do things that mess up the harmony of life that causes us to lie, to keep secrets when we disobey Allah, when we do commit sins, and when we go against the Sharia. So that's the first cause of problems is probably something haram is happening. The second cause of anxiety is just worldly stress because the heart is not calmed down with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the law is the first step the law the sharia is the first step to a calm heart because it gives you a life that is in harmony a life that is everything's in its place that's the first thing and the second thing is the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you don't go to someone say oh just remember allah yeah but what if he's he's doing something you're letting the fox into the what's the expression the coop you're, let, you're letting the fox into the coop. Dhikrullah is not going to solve the problem. Right? Closing the door on the fox and putting glass in the ground so he doesn't dig under. All that is the solution. So you need to look at the... Your, you need to study Islamic fiqh. You need to study fiqh. Sharia. And then you need to uh, uh, fix your life like that. 
If, all right, living my best. If my stepdaughter is married, does her husband become mahram for me? Uh, scroll up real quick, Ryan. Living my best. I did not breastfeed her. The answer is no. You married a man, that man has a daughter. That daughter marries another man. That other man has nothing to do with you. You are, have no connection. Okay? No connection. Okay? Question. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Which dua or name of Allah can we recite when being tested by Allah? I can't hear you. Speak louder. Which dua or name of Allah can we recite when being tested uh, by Allah? If you're being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what dua to recite is constant recitation of Ya Latif, Ya Latif, Ya Latif. Ya Latif, Ya Latif. Also, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Dua Sayyidina Yunus. How do we pray Salah on a plane? That's actually always a question. You pray it however you can pray it. And then according to many fuqaha, you repeat it when you come back down onto the ground. And others said, no, you don't have to do that. Oh, you had a question? Make sure you're speaking into the side that has a text. Speak. Is there a hadith um, dealing, uh, had the prophet deal with uh, xenophobia? What is the, the being hated? Xenophobia means that certain people hate you. Right? The whole seerah is about the Prophet being hated for being a Muslim. who fight back. Fight back. Or, From other countries. you either fight back, or, you re in certain circ circumstances, you reply the evil with good. Right? You either fight back, or you reply the evil with good. We expect non-believers to hate Islam. That's like an expectation. Not all of them, but some of them. I'm surprised by, like, what do you expect? Does not the Qur'an tell you that from them, amongst the non-believers, many will attack you, will fight you, will mock you, will hate you? So why are we surprised? To create a world in which nobody um, hates the truth, that's not really going to be possible. There will always be enemies of truth. So we have to just fight with them. We got to deal with them. Yeah. He pointed out. What, who said what? He said my top suspects for who are the youth in this chat. All right, Othman's top sub suspects. He says the youth in this chat is going to be Uga Panda. All right. Dino. Yusuf Yusuf. Eminem. Shockwave. And Ibrahim Khan. Sophia says... Is it permissible to ask a question in a gathering like this live stream that reveals your sins? No. But you can say it hypothetically. But now, now that we've said that, don't say it. But in the future, in general, you say, hypothetically, if somebody did this and that, asking for a friend, right? You can say that. Next question, please, young lady. Of it and it's against Sufis and has something against Iman Ghazali. You need to speak in the mic. Okay. Okay. Um, something against Imam Al Ghazali? A book? Yeah. I'll throw that book right in the garbage. And and a part of it talks about scholars slandering other scholars. I found quotes of scholars talking about Abu about Abu Hanifa and calling him Dajjal. Oh, that book is garbage. Put it in the garbage. Just just get rid of the book. A book called Calling Abu Hanifa the Dajjal. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. Next question. On Aqidah, when Imam Malik said asking about the Hawness is bid'a. No, that's not the narration we go by. Dino is asking. Dino... Palavra, he knows stuff. By the way, Dino, where are you? It, Italy? With the name like that? Um, that was not the quote we go by. So, Dino, what we go by is the quote states. Let me get the exact quote. Oh, please give me that phone right there. Okay. Um, let me go because I have all these saved. 
He's in Bosnia. Dino says he's in Bosnia. Okay, I only thought Italy, but sounded Italian there. But let me get you the exact quote from Matic on that subject. If I have it, I'm pretty sure I have it. Mm. Okay. The quote says. Here it is. It says. Sa'alta an ghayri majhul. You're asking about something that is known, meaning the word, the Arabic word is known. Wa takallamta fi ghayri ma'qul. And you're speaking about something that cannot be rationalized. Okay? Wa la araka illa rajul asul. Okay? So he's, he, Maddox did not, we do not hold on the, uh, the narration. We go by what Ibn Hajar related. And Ibn Hajar did not relate the narration of Wal Kaif Majhul. The narration of Malik never mentions Kaif. He simply mentions Takalamta fi ghayri maqul. You're speaking of something that uh, is not to be reasoned with. Okay. So that's the answer to that. All right. Reed says, We are not sinful if we miss Fajr due to sleep. The answer to that question is, you are sinful if you did not take the means to wake up that you could have. For example, I have my alarm clock. Eh, nah, I'm not going to set my alarm clock. Then we become sinful for not trying, right? But if you're totally accidentally doing that, then totally accidentally sleep through fudge, then you're not sinful. No. All right. Do you have a question? Yeah. All right, Somebody make sure you speak asking, up. asking... Um so is it okay? Uh, so cigars are not no, we don't smoke at all in the throat. We don't smoke, not at all. No but smoking. There's no inhaling through the throat, only through the mouth, just no. for taste. For 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 fasting. No, 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 not for fasting. Just generally, is it haram? Because there's no, it's not going in the throat, just in the mouth for taste. It is only haram for the from the aspect of if it can cause you some kind of cancer in your in your mouth, and it's also not the way of the salahin to smoke. So that's the answer to that question. Like, it, in, it's, it will be forbidden to the degree that it causes harm in the mouth, right? Um, which, I don't know, we can look that up. And then it would also be, like, discouraged from the aspect that it's not the way that the righteous and the scholars... Have you ever seen a... Can you imagine, <laughs> right? <laughs> also, somebody's asking, did you lose your ring already? No, I have it here, alhamdulillah. I did not lose it, inshallah. I will not lose it. How is one expected, the poetic nafs says, how is one expected to balance accepting the qadr of Allah and submitting to his will versus being patient and steadfast in a difficult situation and constantly repeating our dua when it seems that it's going the other way. Qadr of Allah has nothing to do, you never bring it into the, to the equation regarding your current or your future. You may only speak about Qadr Allah regarding things that happened to you in the past. A guy hit me with a fender bender. That's in the past. Qadr of Allah. I'm about to park my car. Where's Qadr of Allah have to do with that? Nothing. You don't know the Qadr of Allah. Leave it out of the equation completely. Never think about Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding your current or your future you go by what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said yustajabu li ahadikum ma lam ya'jal you will get your answer the istijabah to da'wa as long as you don't rush which means to give up say ah, i made da'wa but nothing happened okay you just keep going don't worry about qadr of allah what what's our business with qadr of allah we don't know it so it's not a factor okay Ali Fattah says, if someone asks whether we have done a particular sin, can we lie to conceal our sins? Yes. Nobody should ask, and you can lie about that. Nobody's business to, we're not, we don't believe in confession, unless it is the confession of, for example, someone's right. Okay? Someone's haq. That where you have to tell the truth. Okay? <sighs> I'm Uga Panda on YouTube, and they're Abby Khan on the phone. All right, so Abby, here we have information now, right? 
Abby Khan, after all these years, Abby Khan and Uga Panda is the same person. Okay? And Abby Khan, Uga Panda admits that sometimes they get a little bit hyperactive and they just type anything. Just to type something. Is celebrating the Mawlid permitted? It's permitted to celebrate the Milad of the Prophet وسلم, with ibadah and dhikr and shukr and na'at, which is praise of the Messenger. I have a difficult time, says Muhammad PDF, wrapping my head around how Allah will deal with the vast majority of the creation who are not Muslim. The fate of their fate is not our business. Worry about your own fate. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لا يسأل عما يفعل You don't ask what Allah does Don't ask about what Allah will do Is he not the most merciful? Is he not the most just? Is he not the most knowledgeable? خلاص, leave it to him Why do we have to worry about that? Some people shave the mustache completely says Maitran Should we do that? And the answer is لا يعني, It's not haram obviously But Madik did not like shaving the whole mustache and leaving the beard No Caitlin says, what are the signs that Allah wants to accept your dua is that you keep doing it. You don't stop. You refuse to give up that prayer. Farida Khan, can you please answer my question? Let's go back up to see Farida Khan's question. Farida, we may have gone in and out of the app and therefore we don't see your question. So type it again. You see it? What does she say? When, when you give Sadaqa Jariya, example, contribute to a project for the people. What attention should we intention should we make? To please Allah or get the reward in the hereafter? It's the same intention. Seeking reward from Allah is pleasing to Allah. Therefore, that is the same intention. If I if all I'm doing, say, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna do a good deed right now. A good deed. For no other reason than Allah will protect me from pain in this life and the next. That is pleasing to Allah. That intention is pleasing to Allah. Someone says, oh, but I'm not really caring about Allah. I'm caring about myself. Yes, but who are you seeking your reward from and your protection from? You're seeking it from Allah? Allah has declared that he loves that intention. That's enough. Okay? Allah has told us that he, if you seek your protection from me, all you care about is yourself, but you seek your protection from me. I love this. And all you care about is yourself but you're seeking your benefit, your personal self-benefit from me, from Allah, that is ikhlas. And that is a good deed. So you have no worries about that. But let me tell you what's going to happen. After Allah protects you over and over and over, and after Allah gives you what you wanted over and over and over, naturally, without you even realizing it, you're going to realize to be near, to worship Allah and be near to Him is better than all those things that I was worrying about. But let that happen naturally. Okay? Let that happen naturally. Abi Khan says, uh, we, that's, we read that question from Abi Khan. Rimla says, How do you know Allah will accept your dua? We go by the sign of the Prophet. If you persist upon the prayer and you never give it up, he will answer it. Who said that? The Messenger of Allah. As long as you do not stop, you will get your answer. Okay? So, that's the sign. That you won't stop. You keep going. One year, two years, three years, five years, 15 years. Okay? Quick, go ahead, Abe, read them, but read them into the mic. Role of women in society. Role of women in society. This, the, the, uh, they're the producers of the next generation without a doubt and I like the old fashioned um, saying that men are the protectors of the family and women are the heart of the family right I like that saying so well, well what is society isn't society a collection of families right a society is a collection of communities and communities are collections of families so within the family unit the women are the heart of the family and the man is supposed to be the protector of that family. In the community, we need women in many fields 
that they can't get access to men in. For example, we have this issue now. Like we don't have a faqih of the women from a women's side. Like we don't have a scholar, a resident in the community living here who can teach from Ibn Ashr to like Aqrab and Masalik. We need that. Who can teach from Jawhar to Tawheed. That's what we need. It's going to take us, Raya, I think it'll take us 10 years, 15 years to produce. Because you're not going to import one. She's got her husband and her family, right? I can't put an ad out, female scholar, come. Well, what is she going to just drag along her husband? Right? No. It's not going to work like that. Unless you hire a sheikh and his wife is also a sheikh. So that's one of the biggest things we need. Obviously, they're needed for medical attention. You want them going to a man? So they're needed in that respect, too. So they're needed in a lot of respects, if you ask me. And is it true that... Uh, I think it was Imam Medic. Speak into Mike. Uh, that he never wore shoes in Medina. Is that true? It is true. I did hear the narration. I did read that Medic did not wear shoes in the old part of Medina that where the, where the Prophet Sallallahu was. I did hear that. Uh, and he definitely did not ride an animal. That I know for sure. The shoe I heard, but the riding is for sure, I'm certain. Ayub Maham thinks that Ayub is a top notch name. I agree. Mm-hmm. If you miss reciting Wird al Latif after Fajr, how long can you read it till? Until Dhuhr. Because it's Adhkar of the Sabah, it's from Fajr to Dhuhr. And the adhkar of the Masa is from Asr to Aisha. Or even till you sleep. Is it against tasawwuf or zuhud to pursue worldly gains? The answer is no. You have to pursue worldly gains. Someone says, I don't like money. Well, you know who else likes money? The electric company. I can't wait to see our electric bill after this air conditioning has been on for... Monday through Thursday. Um, my The school tuition likes money. The supermarket likes money. The gas company likes my money. The car company likes my money. Everyone likes my money. So I need to get a lot of it because these people keep taking it away from me. And that's how life is. Money comes and goes. Sophia says, Dino, I think that we previously said you need to read all your qada salah before praying nawafil, but and you're correct. Sophia is correct. We recite, we have to make up our qada before doing nawafil. That's correct. Hassan says, any tips for feeling less tired after work? I can't do anything after I finish my shift apart from dinner and getting ready for the next day. Yeah, most people I think are like that. But there are ways that you can breathe habits, breathing habits that you can learn that will fill your body with oxygen such as simply getting on the treadmill for a little bit it doesn't have to be running, it could be uphill walking right, taking long brisk walks, it forces you to breathe and that gets the oxygen in your head if you do that as a habit, you'll find yourself with a little bit more energy every day hey, you got something? yes, Go. um a couple of people are wondering when the vacation is on August. In August, there are two weeks that we're out. The beginning from the... Fo- I can actually get it for you here. Mm. I Actually, I don't want to step out of the app because... Um, because you know the way this app is. You step out of the app, you lose all the questions. All right, so I'll tell you when we're out. We are out, ladies and gentlemen. Pay attention. August 8th through 11th, the second week of August. And then the tail part, August 18th until probably 24th. So August is a summer month. People are supposed to be on vacation in August and people do their business in August. There are certain things I do in August because I know it's a slow month. I can never do them any other time of the year, so I do them in August. So that's the reason why we will have four, five, six, seven, probably six to seven sessions we will not have in the month of August. But then once we hit September, we are back on. 
Okay. Straight. September, October, November, December, straight. End of December, we have Umrah trip, inshallah. Once, the, once the, that information comes out, we'll put the link out. Could you imagine if we meet some of these people in Umrah? That would be great, right? So um, we don't have the information yet, but we did have the commitment. We made the commitment with the Umrah company that end of December, beginning of January, or Umrah. But in terms of work, the bulk of work that happens in America is September, October, November, December. Then we're back. January, February, March, Ramadan. So we have a heavy seven months coming up on us, right? That's the school year. Once Ramadan comes, after Ramadan, again we pick up, then it's summer again, and so on. Uh, Caitlin says, how do you stop worrying about rizq? You have to displace the uh, negative ideas that you have with good ideas. Somebody was asking you if you can make da'a for um, a mother who lost her pregnancy at five months. SubhanAllah. Mother lost her pregnancy at five months. May Allah ta'ala make it easy for her and make her next pregnancy a success. May Allah make it easy for them. Okay, Rahani, you're on, you're on Insta. All right, let's... Mason Hakes says, if some, rev some reveals a sin of yours and there's no proof, nor is anyone harmed, can I deny it? Yes, you can. We do not spread our sins and you are allowed to cover your, your sins. Abdul Hadi's got his two younger cousins on the stream. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan to Abdul Hadi's cousins. Raise your hand if you have something and speak into the mic. Yeah, young lady. Lily Rose says, I watched a frightening documentary about companies mining for Bitcoin and how their physical presence in the world, these hundreds of machines, require a small power station to power it. I'm not really familiar, to be quite honest with you, um, on the whole world of Bitcoin nor the world of energy consumption. Quite honest with you. Uh, Khadija, you got it. Just 10 to 15 minutes. But every single day, following a curriculum, it makes a massive difference. I remember some of the best days of my life when I just take 20 minute fit lesson a day. That's it. 20 minutes, not more, not less, but 100% focus. Not more and not less, but 100% focus. And I would feel like it gets stronger and stronger and stronger as time goes on. Ayub? So first, apparently, yes, cigars do cause cancer to the mouth. So it would Cigars be, cause cancer to the mouth, so that's a problem. Yeah, so it, it does harm you, right? Yeah, okay. that's a And problem. second, um, so somebody's struggling to pray with the Hushua in front of people, want to pray alone, what's the best worship? Uh, how do I overcome this? You only pray what is a sunnah to pray in the jama'ah and then the rest you can pray at home so for example it is a sunnah to pray in the mosque right don't skip that out for the rijal it's not a, the same level of sunnah for the females permitted for women to pray in the mosques but for the men it's a sunnah okay and so the obligatory prayers you do that and you struggle to have ikhlas because the, obey the Prophet ﷺ. he said that this is good for you and it's good for you because you're going to meet people you're going to make friends you're going to see other people who have more piety than you then you want to be like them it's a lot of benefits what's so funny Ryan? someone said it's not fair that you're missing people's questions it's not fair that who? that you miss people's questions uh, where are they? which questions are we missing? Tahira Tahira Let's go. She fine. puts a leaf every time. She's okay, yeah. putting the Canadian leaf. Okay. Can, can women go to Hajj on their own? Yes, women can go to Hajj on their own. Um, Tahira, the Canadian. Wow, we just said the word Bitcoin, and then we got a comment from Bitcoin, bitinvest.xyz. So they've basically got these bots. Pretty impressive, to be honest with you. 
Can you imagine if we made a bot for Islam? Anytime Islam is mentioned, we say here. Boom. Description of the Prophet. Video. Link. What is the ruling on saying something that is literally true? You understand one thing, but the other person will understand it differently. Okay. For example, having a common product, but saying you won't find it anywhere. You're allowed to use those. It's halal. Maham has a question. Khushua, oh, we just answered that. Thank you very much. I didn't realize it was her that Ayub was reading. Sayyid Muhammad Daniel, long time, no see. He says, pray like nobody else is in the room. Correct. Somebody's okay. asking, should I go ahead and get married after college or study the deen? Should I get married after college or study the deen? It depends on your personal circumstance. If not marrying will be a fitna for you, then you have to marry. But if it won't be a fitna, then study the deen. And what's the minimum requirement in dealing with a brother-in-law for a woman? The brother-in-law has nothing to do with you, basically. Yeah, and he, and he's going to be in family gatherings. And you're going to talk to them a minimal talk. A minimal talk. But there's, there's not going to avoid talking to him, right? Like, it's, if, when, when families come together, the Qur'an permits them to sit when there's a family like let's say two families come to visit the house the Quran says you may sit and eat together or you may sit and eat separately men and women obviously if you're going to sit and eat together but there should there may be some conversation but that conversation should be with the basics of Islamic morals and manners right and it shouldn't go beyond that and shouldn't go to something private for sure how to remove the thought of my da'as will be answered in the hereafter only also you don't each... know that yeah who's uh, saying that uh, Shay K Shay K why don't you also every time your mind goes to say to yourself my da'a would be only answered in the akhirah say to yourself and maybe in the dunya because you don't know that you have no knowledge why speculate and let your mind drift to what you have no knowledge about that's negative whereas the prophet wants you to uh, the Allah has commanded us to have hope in him now so that's the answer what else did she say about that uh, is each da'a answer in one of three ways example 100 da'as for same thing one will be what you want the rest save if you make da'a 100 times right then Allah answers you the answer is for one of them 99 for the removal of hardships and for the akhirah you see how it works? Isn't that really generous? And so when Allah answers you, He's not answering, that answer doesn't count for all of them, that answer counts for one. Okay, yes? I think somebody who just joined is asking again how to make yourself motivated. How do you make yourself motivated? If you ask me, motivation is always connected to happiness, right? Or fear. It's only connected to two emotions. Happiness or fear. So you got to work on being able to trigger yourself. How do you trigger yourself, right? Sometimes you don't like fear. Sometimes you need fear, right? You can trigger yourself by some emotion of that sort. And you, and you do that by conjuring up a situation. Like, I have so much to gain from this. I want to create this business or I want to marry this person. I want to do this, that, and the other. You create a desire for yourself or you create a fear for yourself. I don't want to be a garbage man when I grow up. I don't want to be a pumping gas when I grow up. Okay? I don't want to be a bum. I don't want to be depressed. And you fight. So you have to trigger an emotion in yourself. That's personally the only way I found to, 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 to get yourself up. Okay? Make sense? Yunus Awan, he notes that the Hanafi school has a different rule regarding and a different categorization regarding the Nawafil. What I said was in the Maliki school. We have three categories of the prayers that are around the obligatory prayers. Witr is Sunnah Mu'akkadah. The two rakahs before Fajr is Raghiba, means less than Sunnah Mu'akkadah, a little bit. 
and the rest are nafila. And only missing wits regularly is bad for your deen. It means something's wrong with your deen, right? It's a defect in your deen. But for the Hanafi school, all of these sunnah, all of those nawafil for them are considered sunan that you are not allowed to miss. Okay. Um, I see Ryan and Ayub exchanging glances. Sophia is is um, essentially advocating for Amin. Well, as we said, we have advocates now. All right. Yes. Ryan is the one who's controlling the, uh, the f- scrolling okay. of the questions. So if Ryan, he scrolls up too fast, I won't be able to read all of the questions. Okay, so Ryan's time. scrolling the screen. So Ayub is basically saying, I can't see Amin's question because Ryan controls this, the, the, the... I have my iPad here. All right, and we have another screen there that Ryan is scrolling. So Amin says, Morocco is the only country where the line of Hassan rules. Correct. I remember seeing Habib Omar from Yemen meeting the Hassanis there in Fez very beautiful it seems most scholars are from Hussein in our time I think there are a lot they're not exactly like a minority as Hassan no but the east is predominantly Husseini Ahl al-Bayt and the west is predominantly Hassani Ahl al-Bayt and Allah knows best about that where else was Amin's question that was oh oh he kept he posted it a couple times good Question from Instagram. Uh-huh. Instagram froze, so let us unfreeze the Instagram. So if someone revealed a sin uh, that he had committed, can he deny it? You answered yes. However, isn't that conditional on not making the accuser out to be a liar? Yeah, that's, that's subhanAllah. Um, the accuser is only a valid accuser if there is someone else's right involved. Okay? For example, I walked by your room and I saw you committing some sin or other. What, what's his business with that? Right? What's your business with that? Uh, where is the accus- there's no need for an accusation like that which is different from you're engaged to so and so you're engaged to Samiha okay I saw you in the club with Jessica okay I go and tell Samiha Samiha he's a fraud I saw him in the club with Jessica okay that's something that He's a valid accuser, right? He's a valid accuser at that point because he's protecting Samia. Where so there, there when the accusers can be valid or invalid, and the valid acu- accusation is that which is protecting somebody. Make sense? Lily Rose talks about Hamza Hussein or Sheikh Hamza Yusuf talking about carbon footprints and the word tread lightly on the earth. It is for sure, no doubt about it, an Islamic responsibility to not damage the earth. It's an Islamic responsibility to not damage the earth. Dino, I know it's not related. To the subject, but you mentioned when you make du'a for something specific, you have to say, if it's good for me. Every once in a while, say, if it's good for me. Okay. He's saying, doesn't that go without say? Well, just say it anyway, every once in a while. Because it's admitting to, that Allah knows and we don't know. And Allah loves that admission. Question. We you- have a Dr. Shadi, what are you doing in the club, though? Who said that? Dino. <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> what are you doing in the club? No, oh, That's a good question. <laughs> no, I was going to the masjid and driving past the club, right? In that example. No, no, that's a good question. Well, wait a second. How did you see him in the club? What were you doing in the club? No, 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 no. I was driving by the masjid. 
right? And saw him going into the club. That's the only thing. That's a good one, though. Okay. That's a good one. All right, folks. Thank you all very much. Tomorrow, remember. Remember, tomorrow is Yom Al Arbi'a. We will do a nice long dua at the end of the session. Okay. Nice long dua. Last question we'll take, Saracen. Is the proof for the single taslim in the Madiki school stronger than the two taslims? Yes. But both are valid opinions, but the one is stronger. From what I remember, that's how it is. Uh, Chief Latif, who do you want to be a guest on the stream? My friend is coming to visit MBIC. Yeah, send him over. Okay. He can come. We can meet him. Have him email info at safinasociety.org and Ryan will connect with him. Is my mic okay or is it buzzing today? That's good. It's good? Okay, good. Because we have all of them open. Because they're all on and we got wind too here. We got air. Chief Latif is just asking, does uh, inhaling smoke break your fast or smelling it as well? Smelling it and inhaling smoke breaks your fast. Okay, Chief Latif, his name is Suhaib. Send him... Not our Sohaib, of course, he's already been here, but it must be a different Sohaib. So send an email to infosafinasidi.org. Ryan will hook him up and he'll be our guest. Okay. All right, folks. Jazakum Allah khairan. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk. Wal asr. Inna al insana lafi khusr. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم and may Allah Ta'ala bless all of you and your week and your day and may Allah Ta'ala lift up all of our burdens from our shoulders and fill our hearts with happiness in this life and the next we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make us people of happiness in our dunya and in our deen, in this life and in the next, and fill our hearts with what pleases us and what pleases Him, and remove from our hearts what displeases us and displeases Him. And we ask Allah to make none more beloved to us than His most beloved, His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah ta'ala to keep us healthy and remove away from us poverty and sicknesses and hasad and the fitna that lead us astray from our deen. We ask Allah Ta'ala to remove, to decrease the prices for us, to, for those seeking jobs, that Allah give them jobs, those seeking spouses, that Allah give them spouses, those seeking children, that Allah Ta'ala bless them with beautiful children, those trying to raise their children, and may Allah help them, raising their children and give them upright offspring. رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ عَيُونَ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامَ O Allah, make from our spouses and our children the, those who will be the coolness of our eyes. May Allah Ta'ala give us consistency in ibadah, recitation of Qur'an, and dhikr, and tasbih, and salah on the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and dua with tadarru' and consistency in our dua, and never leave off a dua once we start it until Allah has fulfilled it for us or has given something that we admit is better naturally with our own hearts is better for us and are satisfied with it we ask Allah for all those involved in the da'wah and helping with this live stream and other live streams and all the works of da'wah throughout the world may Allah Ta'ala make them reward them in this life and the next and alleviate their burdens calm their hearts down and give them a good life and a good afterlife we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all those out there who have a dua or something that is on their mind we ask Allah to fulfill it for them and make it a blessing for them in this life and the next for you are the most generous Ya Kareem Ya Kareem Ya Kareem Ya Mujib Ya Mujib Ya Mujib Istajib du'aana wa sallallahu wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh